Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name's Bobby Waldron, and in this video, we're going to be having a product review on iWater's um, Eclipse airbrush now this airbrush is the HP CS Eclipse um, so let's get it out of the box and we'll talk a little bit more about this particular airbrush now this airbrush uh, is about 120 pounds depends on where you go in you could be paying 100 130 or or something around about that price so it's a good quality airbrush um, comes in this nice protective um, see-through kind of plastic box going on here it's nicely protected by um, foam here is our airbrush and moving more through down we will come to a nice set of instructions and like a nice little spanner which we'll, we'll sh I'll show you that a bit more later the instructions are rather good for kind of familiarizing yourself with the actual airbrush parts and then as you read through it you'll find that there's all sorts of stuff going on here about troubleshooting how to use the airbrush a bit just basic basic stuff um, now this particular airbrush is the um, CS version which means it's um, the gravity feed ie uh, we've got our cup on the top and gravity feeds <coughs> excuse me down to the needle it's also a dual action airbrush which basically means push down for air and then pull back to get paint uh, the Eclipse range does have another, uh, has four airbrushes altogether. You do have the BS version, which is basically exactly the same as this, but it has a 1.5mm cup, so a nicer, smaller cup, just so you can get into harder to reach places. Um, it does have a 0.3 needle in it, um, so it's sort of like a nice sort of standard um, needle size to kind of be able to do fine stuff as well as um, doing kind of good coverage as well. Um, this is the CS version which has the bigger 7mm cup size which is kind of like a nice standard size for all sorts of modeling really also with the 0.3 needle you have the SBS version as well of the Eclipse which is a side feed so basically you're going to have a 1.5mm cup but it's going to be attached to the side it's sort of like your own sort of preference um, going on there then you have the B C S version which is a siphon feed which is basically at the bottom you stick um, all sorts of um, pots and cups in there and it, it sucks it up rather than um, having the gravity on it that it, um, can have a cup capacity of 28 mils which is rather big with a nice 0.5 mil needle in there which um, is basically you'd use that airbrush for big coverage you know because you've got the bigger cup size you've got the bigger needle size you're not going to be doing any delicate work you're really going to do some big um, coverage going on there um, so those are the the different airbrushes you can get in this Eclipse range and I think the Eclipse range is the nice standard good quality um, airbrushes from a Wattie so it's a, a good one to show you um, so let's start off by actually taking this apart and let's just see you know all the bits inside how it goes together how it get um, t takes apart uh, and we'll have a close look then we'll do some spraying let's start by um, taking this apart now you've got a nice little um, lid for this which is um, rather good and um, some airbrushes you don't get it basically as you're kind of like spraying around and all this stuff it stops the the paint from actually coming out um, which is quite handy um, we have uh, some nice um, sort of nozzles going on here it isn't like a crown cap or anything like that um, so you might want to buy sort of like the upgrade it turns it into a crown cap it looks um, if I just borrow one from our, um, our Vida airbrush I have here see the crown cap it looks like a crown it just kind of helps you clean it a little bit better um, that kind of stuff um, but that's going to set you back about £15 to actually buy that little upgrade there comes off nice and easy we, as you can see we've got this really tiny tiny little um, needle here so let's remove the rest of the nozzle nicely easily screwed off as you can see just there nicely screws off not painted on the inside though um, not sure why that is is it bad quality is it there to um, you know this is where the paint is probably going to be um, more around so maybe by not putting paint on it it saves it from kind of the paint sort of wearing away as 
some airbrushes do um, don't know but there you go but then this is um, the thing with Iwata is what you need you need this little spanner here and what we need to do is we need to just um, loosen off our um, nice nozzle here and then we just we can, once we've like loosened it off we should be able to with our fingers just screw this off and as you can see this is um, mega mega small as you can see um, these things are quite expensive so you do want to be really careful with this particular part um, because um, if you're sort of new to airbrushing um, you, you're probably going to get through maybe one or two of these before you start to kind of uh, appreciate how delicate it is and then they'll probably last you for ages um, but nice tiny tiny piece going on there um, now what I like to do um, and I think it's good practice is when you're taking your airbrush apart <coughs> is once you've got the nozzle bits off is take your back bit off here just screw it off nice and easy right and then we need to just um, loosen this part here just a little bit so that we can actually move our needle uh, and I find it good practice to push it through the nozzle end I do this because um, what you don't want to do is um, the needle is potentially going to have all sorts of paint and gunk on there and if you pull it backwards you're going to be pulling it pulling all that dirt, all that kind of paint and everything back for all these moving parts and all these moving parts from here backwards you want to keep all nice and clean so it's always good to push it through that way um, which is where all the paint is you know you don't want to bring it back and then we can simply take off another one of these nozzles which this one when I first had this to get this to come off was rather hard and um, so you want to be kind of careful the first time you take it off because you're possibly going to scratch it um, but we screw that off just nicely and we have our other little piece just there for our nozzle and as you can see this is coming to apart quite easily um, then we have all our back stuff here where we have all our trigger and our springs and everything this is just nice and easy we just nicely screw this off that can actually stay on there screw this off comes back and there we go nice and easy there's a nice little spring in here if we just take this off there we go nice simple easy to take apart our trigger here comes out um, one thing I did notice about this trigger is there is like a little bit of grease just in there so you might want to keep that a little bit greased up um, as you go along and that is basically it there is like um, some o-rings and a little screw just down there but we want to leave that in there and not really play around with that that much um, so there you go comes apart rather easy it looks um, pretty good quality um, nothing really to sort of pick about here so let's let's put this back together um, if you was going to do any cleaning the main part you're going to be cleaning on this is a tiny little nozzle here um, cleaning that up um, and probably kind of getting cotton wool budge just inside the colour cup there uh, um, needle here is going to want to be cleaned up as well this feels like a good needle too I mean um, you can tell when they're good needles because they feel smooth right you feel it don't push that way by the way um, you just want to push that way um, and it feels smooth um, you know if it's a bad needle because it will feel rough um, and that is very good quality going on there so let's put this back together um, what we can do with is start putting back all the trigger bits and bobs there um, and this um, isn't actually too bad we can just start off by putting our um, trigger back in there's a nice little hole just in there let's uh, just get you in a bit closer as you can see there's a nice little hole there and we just put our little trigger into there there we go hold on now I'm on camera it doesn't seem to want to go in there we go and that should just push down nicely you can feel it spring back up right and then here's a little bit of a tricky part is pushing this in 
and you just want to have that um, just that little bit of metal there pushing up against your trigger like so and then we just nicely screw that in nice and easily now this is one cool thing about this actual one if we screw this all the way down keep screwing you'll feel the trigger oop, has popped out and that's because the needles not in there one second let's uh, screw that back out well, basically what I'm trying to show you here is um, the more you screw it in I think I'm gonna have to get this completely out to get this in one second basically the more you screw it in um, <clears throat> the more resistance you get pulling back on the trigger and the the less you screw it in um, the less resistance you get so basically you can tune it to your preference do you want it to be um, kind of loose like this is I mean this feels rather loose here but if I screw that all the way down it feels much more tighter so I mean that is a nice kind of preference you could do but I don't like it tight so I'm gonna bring it back a bit um, and then what we want to do is um, come to the front bit as well we want to put our first part of our nozzle just in there it fits in it fits loosely there's no screwing or anything and then we just screw on this big back nozzle bit just like so now this is the important part with um, the Iwata um, airbrushes is this tiny 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 little nozzle you must be careful with this when screwing it back on start by doing it finger tight all right just nice and slowly because this will cross thread rather easily <coughs> now getting your spanner right we do we really do not want to tighten this up hard at all it is going to cross thread so we just kind of tighten it so it just ah uh, you know it just feels just tight now you may under tighten it by being careful um, and if you under tighten it what's probably going to happen is you'll start seeing bubbles come out your color cup right what that means is you've potentially got to come along and probably tighten this up a little bit more um, I'd rather have to have bubbles coming out the top and go okay I need to tighten that up a little bit more than tighten it too much and cross thread it because I think they cost like 15 pounds or something to replace so we don't want to be going down that avenue so be careful with that better be safe than sorry um, now that's in place what we can do is we can put on our nozzle caps here now nicely simply screws on then we can get our we're going to put this on first Oops. screw this on just a little bit and then we get our our needle and what we want to do we want to thread this through nice and slowly that's on a little bit too tight so let's loosen it off there we go it goes in there our triggers come out a bit I can feel that a little bit so that should go through better now you'll feel as it gets to about here that it gets a bit kind of um, you got to push it a bit more this is because we've got our o-rings just here and it just needs a little bit of little bit of force just to go past I mean we're not hitting something solid it just needs a bit of force just to get past these o-rings and then you should just see it start popping out where our nozzle is and you just want to not push it you just want to, as soon as you see it and it just stops starts to show resistance stop and then we just tighten this on there all nice all good then we should be able to put on a little um, back plate here and that's looking good putting on our needle cap nice the screws on nice and easy you know that has gone uh, apart easy it's um, gone back together really easy um, not really seeing any problems that it all looks good quality parts um, so let's see how it actually sprays now sorry last thing once you put it together you know push down push back just to test to make sure you know it's all working and what you should see is this back bit 
coming backwards and you should see the needle going in and out and you know it's all good and working so let's see how it sprays right then coming back to showing you a bit of spraying now one thing you don't get with this is this uh, nice little adapter here to actually um, have a quick release valve um, this you, you can get away with not having like the quick release valve but I like it um, so I've kind of gone off and brought one I think um, you know they're a couple of quid it is nicer to be able to just leave this on and then all we do is we clip on air we've got air clip off we don't have air um, so that's quite nice um, so how does it spray? Um, well, I have been spraying a nice bit with uh, my Zero over here. I've been spraying all internal detail and been spraying around with it. Um, and it's been really good. The airbrush I've always used is this Evolution uh, 2 in 1 that I've, I have here. I've been used to this, I love it, use it all the time. Um, but actually, I'm finding this a water is. Um, it feels just as good the quality feels just as good it sprays just as good um, hopefully as you can see here uh, we can get some really nice fine lines as you can see there yeah nice fine lines we can get some nice coverage as you can see there sprays out nicely no problems yeah there you go I mean it does feel good I've been spraying with it quite a lot um, what can I say um, it does I would I'm I mean, I would say this is a lifetime airbrush. You buy one of these, £120, and you probably never have to buy an airbrush again. It does it all. It's good quality. It's going to last for ages. You can go off and you can buy all the um, the parts, every little part in here you can go off and buy separately. So if something breaks, just go off and buy a replacement. Um, the paintwork seems kind of good. Um, it does seem kind of strange how they don't spray, um, say, inside. Um, you know, but don't hold me to that one. Um, it does feel a bit on the heavy side um, compared to. I mean, I should have got some Wayne scales out, but I don't know. I just, I'm just feeling between my Evolution and this um, Eclipse here. Um, the water just feels in my hand just a bit heavier than the evolution um, as well as the trigger I mean I'm, I'm getting used to it I mean I suppose it is one of these things you get used to whatever you're getting whatever you've got because um, I'm used to the the trigger on the evolution which is um, sort of differently shaped whereas this one just seems a bit I don't know uh, feels a little bit kind of simple just a, a circle going on there but I think it's something you could probably get used to um, but I do like how um, our back here is nicely opened up because what this means is if you've got a bit of a blockage um, you know you can take your, your nozzle cap off you can clean the nozzle but what you can also do is you just kind of flip this back like this and it kind of just pulls the needle backwards and forward and you can um, basically nicely sort of clean your nozzle a bit quicker and easier um, than say what I'm used to the evolution um, so yeah I would have to say this is definitely a recommended product um, you're not gonna go wrong with it um, you, you can get it over the evolution or I think evolution in this this water airbrush is a nice um, standard airbrush to get if you want to get an airbrush for around about the hundred hundred and twenty pound marks um, you know you, you're going to be happy either way so um, hopefully you know this has been beneficial to show you about the Eclipse from a water um, so until next time here at Genesis Models my name is Bobby Waldron and I hope you've enjoyed <laughs> Thank you.